What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this is the Celero 5G Plus from Boost Mobile. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what even is that? I didn't know what it was before I bought it. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, but this is a budget prepaid phone that honestly has no business being as good as it is. This is a phone that's exclusively offered through Boost Mobile, obviously. It's sort of kind of their own brand, their own in-house smartphone. It's full retail price is actually $290, but odds are you won't pay anywhere near that much for it since, well, right now it's seemingly on sale for 60 bucks. And if you're a new or existing Boost Mobile customer, they'll probably give you some sort of a deal on it. Now, right away, you might've already noticed that this is a massive smartphone. It's the biggest, tallest phone I've used this year by far. Its screen size is 6.95 inches, almost a full seven inch smartphone corner to corner, but the phone is even a little bigger than that. It has the chunkier side bezels and bottom chin that most phones in this price range still have. And just to give you an idea of how massive this is, here's the Celero next to the Samsung A54, which is a normal size 6.4 inch phone, but it looks quite small here by comparison. I mean, this thing literally takes up the width of both of my hands. It's very tall, so you'll be shifting and stretching your fingers to try and reach every edge of the screen but if you like big screen smartphones, I don't know of anything else that's larger than this. Around back, the Celero actually looks quite nice. You get this faux metal look. It's an all plastic smartphone and it feels like plastic too, but visually I think it gives off more of a premium vibe. There is that big old Celero 5G Plus logo printed across the bottom, which I guess is fine. Without it, you'd really have no idea what this phone even is. And it's also a really flat phone, flat sides and a totally flat rear with no camera bump or bulge at all, which I really like. There's subtle trim pieces around the camera lenses, but other than that, this is far and away the flattest, simplest, and most straightforward design for a smartphone I've seen as well. The only thing that's kind of odd actually is that the screen sort of sticks out a little bit from the frame. It's not a curved display. It's almost just like the plastic edge of the screen is set higher than the frame of the phone. Some budget phones used to have this. It's not something I've seen in a while though. Taking a quick look around at everything else, this phone has almost all the essentials that you'd want. There's a micro SD card slot for expandable storage, but you may not even need it since the phone ships with 128 gigs of onboard storage, which for a budget prepaid device actually is a lot. And it also helps that you get the most bare bones Android experience on this phone too, with no bloatware, no pre-installed apps, or any other junk, which I'll talk about in a second. On the right side, your usual volume buttons and power buttons slash fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor is pretty solid. It's faster if you just touch it to unlock versus pressing the button, waking the phone and unlocking, but it works well. I just wish it was placed a little higher on the side of the phone. This thing is so big and so tall that the placement of the fingerprint sensor right dead in the middle there is almost too low. So the phone is really top heavy when you're holding it in your hand. There's nothing at the top of the phone at the bottom, you've got your USB-C port, the headphone jack is still there, and a single speaker setup. Unfortunately, no secondary speaker for this phone. That's the only thing it's really missing, but the selfie camera is there, obviously, and around back, a triple lens camera setup, even though it sort of looks like four cameras, but I'll talk about that as well in just a minute. So a big screen on a phone like this is only as good as its specs, and fortunately, the resolution and refresh rate are actually better than you might expect. The display itself is an IPS TFT panel, essentially LCD, and it's a full 2400 by 1080 resolution screen, packing in around 376 pixels per inch. A screen this gargantuan in size has to be 1080 resolution at least, so I'm glad we have that here. And even though the pixel density technically isn't that high, just based on the screen size dimensions and resolution, it's still a sharp looking display even up close. Shockingly, it's also a 120 hertz high refresh rate display, which I didn't expect at all. Some some $300 to $400 phones only get 90 hertz displays. So this was an unexpected surprise, and with this option enabled, the phone feels plenty fast and fluid. And it has the internal specs to keep up too. The negative with the display is just that it's not very bright, and in fact it's probably one of the dimmest displays I've tested out, comparable to the likes of the Moto G Play. Inside, in my office here, the phone is set to like 80% brightness, and even that still has a ton of glare, and it isn't nearly as bright as you'd expect. 
But to be honest, that's probably the only thing I'd want to change with this phone. Everything else is great, and having a phone this big to watch content on is pretty nice. Actually, there is one more thing I wish this phone had dual speakers. The single speaker at the bottom of the phone is fine. It gets very loud, maybe a little too loud, to a point where it's sort of distorted and blown out at max volume. It's not a bad speaker though, but it could be a little better. As far as the internal specs and the performance, this is what probably surprised me the most. This phone is fast and reliable, partly because of the super minimal Android experience and partly because of its decent processor. It's powered by the Snapdragon 695 with 6 gigabytes of RAM. Here are the Geekbench scores if you want to compare numbers, but this phone is on par with the likes of the OnePlus Nord N30, last year's Samsung A23 5G, the 2022 Moto G Stylus 5G, all of which were priced higher than this phone. Now, it's not the newest, latest, and greatest set of internals, but this phone has plenty of power to keep things going. And it also ships with, like I said before, probably the most minimal Android experience you'd ever come across. There isn't a single pre-installed app on this phone besides the Essentials and Google suite of apps. There's no bloatware, no skins, no themes, nothing even from Boost Mobile. So you get the absolute purest Android experience that I think helps keep things fast and fluid and responsive on the phone. The downside to this phone right now is it still runs Android 12 with no recent software updates from the past couple of months, and I have no idea when or if it'll even get Android 13. I hope it does, but I think if you're looking to stay on top of Android updates and security patches, this isn't the phone for you. By the way, if you actually want to know who made this phone, it's a WingTech device, the same company that made T-Mobile's Revel smartphones. There's certainly some similarities there, but there's no official Wing tech or even Boost Mobile branding or software or other indicators anywhere. Regardless of the no name, no brand status with this phone, it's a surprisingly solid performing smartphone considering it is a budget prepaid device not made from one of the big companies like Samsung or Motorola. And I'm happy and relieved that performance doesn't seem to be an issue. There are some other mid-rangers and budget phones out there. <clears throat> Motorola that perform quite poorly, and that just isn't the case here. As you might expect, this phone is also powered by a big battery, 5,000 milliamps. Now, to be honest, given its huge size, I sort of expected an even bigger battery than that. And since the screen is also so large and takes up some of that battery power, comparatively, you probably won't be getting as good of battery life as, say, a smaller Moto G or Samsung A series device that also all have 5,000 milliamp batteries. But one other thing that's sort of random is that this phone has wireless charging, something almost no other sub $400 phone ever offers, and you do get the necessary charging accessories in the box, which is great. Last but not least, what looks like four camera lenses around back on this phone is actually three plus the flash. But the camera setup and actual pictures are once again far better than you might expect. The main lens on this phone is a 50 megapixel shooter, and you get a 5 megapixel ultra wide and a 2 megapixel macro. The selfie camera is a respectable 16 megapixel shooter up front, and within the camera app, you get just the basics and then maybe a little more. Everything I consider to be very useful. For starters, the wide angle lens on this phone is not something you'll see on most other budget devices, and it's way more useful than a macro or depth sensor, which is what you'd normally find. There is the macro lens on this phone too though for up close pictures and night mode and pro controls and a 50 megapixel mode and even Google Lens comes pre-installed. You can shoot video at up to 1080 resolution, 60 FPS. There's not many more shooting modes or camera settings beyond that stuff though. And oddly enough, what's totally missing is the ability to take portrait pics or live focus shots with the selfie camera. So that's a bit of a bummer. The couple of picture samples I did take with this phone though really look good, like surprisingly good. Well balanced, good color and contrast, not over processed. And there's a ton of detail too, both with the selfies and the rear camera pictures. And the portrait mode does a nice job too. These are definitely better pictures than I would expect from a sub $300 no name smartphone. And I really don't have much to complain about. So what the heck is the Boost Mobile Celero 5G Plus? Well, it's just about the biggest smartphone you can buy today with a massive seven inch, 120 hertz screen, decent looking build, solid internal specs, 
and seamless bare bones Android experience. And it takes some pretty good pictures too. What is it missing? Well, a brighter screen would have been nice, dual speakers and selfie portraits for whatever reason. And the fact that it's exclusive to Boost Mobile is also a pretty big caveat. But if you are a Boost customer or you're thinking about switching, I would seriously consider this phone. I don't necessarily think it's worth its full retail price, but I'm sure it would be available for a deal. And even though it's a no brand mystery phone exclusive to one carrier, it's surprisingly good. But what do you guys think? Would you rock the Celero 5G Plus? I know it's been out for a while, so maybe you already have it yourself. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.